folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm finally back after a brief, long hiatus break. You know, just taking some time to upload some commercial breaks and just relax and, you know, go out, do all the fun activities and all, so on and so forth. So I haven't been able to do any movie reviews for quite some time. The last movie review I'd done was back in March, which was the film Turning Red, the latest Disney Pixar film that's streaming exclusively to Disney+. Plus. You should check that movie out. It's actually very fun. But now, you're in for a very special treat, because I'm going to be reviewing a magical fantasy masterpiece from the legendary writer and director Hayao Miyazaki, who specialized Japanese animation from his production company Studio Ghibli who gave us a lot of amazing movies such as My Neighbor Totoro, along with Kiki's Delivery Service, Poco Rosso, Princess Mononoke, Nausicaa the Valley of the Wind, and House Moon Castle, Ponyo, and some others. It's the movie that actually earned an Oscar for Best Animated Feature, and it won back in 2003. It's called Spirited Away, a story about a 10-year-old girl named Chihiro who just moved to a new neighborhood in Japan with her parents, who embarks on a journey into an abandoned amusement park which at this rate would be the the world of Kami, which is a spirits of the Japanese Shantor folklore that's already been casted by a sorceress named Yubaba, where you see all these wicked spirits and ghosts around, including this uh, no-face character. And soon She's on her own while her parents have turned into pigs. She meets a, a young man named, who is the spirit of the forest, who is the spirit of the Kahagi River named Haku, who helps her um, be able to go up against uh, Yubaba by working at a bathhouse in, in order for her to free her parents from this evil spell and help all the others around and also begin to change personality here okay now this is the two this special edition that I picked up back in 2003 after its theatrical release had ended in fact I went to see this movie at Glendale Cinemas which was primarily General Cinema Glendale Central 5, which is no longer around anymore. It now simply became an office building. At this rate, it's now a Kaiser Permanente. Yeah. And when I first saw this for the very first time, because I couldn't see this movie elsewhere, other than the fact that they were playing this at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood, among selected theaters, um, the film didn't get a extensive wide release until after it finally won the Oscar and it was the first and only Oscar that they ever earned for a Studio Ghibli film that's up against other animated features including Lilo and Stitch and Ice Age come to mind but I never thought this would actually happen yeah and I'm so happy because this was the best animated feature since My Neighbor Totoro, which happens to be one of my favorite Studio Ghibli films from Hayao Miyazaki. And this definitely joins right there. It became so popular from many uh, countries around, including Japan, because it became the highest grossing film after Princess Mononoke, which was back in 1997 when it came out in the summer. So, it earned as many as it could, like over $500 million, uh, which in, in Japan it's yen. So it made a, a, a ton as, as it could. 
But too bad in North America, which was under the distribution of Disney at the time, executive producer John Lasseter, who was the head of uh, Pixar Animation Studios, had tend to join in with Miyazaki, because now he became his close friend, to help them out try to find a distributor to actually finally get the release it deserves and also to provide the English translation for all the actors involved. So you got uh, Davli Chase from Donnie Darko yeah, where she played uh, Donnie Darko's sister Samantha I know she went on to do the movie The Ring as well as the voice of Lilo and Lilo and Stitch that's her and it's joined in with actors like Lauren Holly from Dumb and Dumber, Michael Chicklitz from The Shield and The Commish, as well as Fantastic Four. As Suzanne Prochette in one of her last film roles, she, she played Emily in the TV show The Bob Newhart Show, if you may remember her. And they also got uh, Susan Egon from, who was best known for for the Broadway musical of Beauty and the Beast, where she played Belle. But she also went on to do the voice of Megan in Hercules. And also, we got uh, Jason Marsden, the voice of Max Goof in the, a Goofy movie. Yeah, you know, taking over for uh, Dana Hill. But he's done numerous uh, voice acting and all ever since so it's nice to see that we got a great cast to join and anyway this DVD does include special features uh, it has um, Spirited Away introduction by John Lasseter they, oh and speaking of uh, <laughs> which I forgot to mention since he's involved with it they also got uh, John Ratzenberger in a very small role um, as you may already know, because he was best known for playing Cliff Clavin in Cheers before he went on to become a regular for all the Pixar films. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Then we got The Artist Spirited Away, um, which was uh, hosted by Jason Marsden. The Nippon Television Special, that's the making of the film from Japan. Scene story board to scene comparison. The Behind the Microphone uh, with Suzanne Pluchet and Jameson Marsden join in with all, all the other actors. And the original Japanese trailers. And of course, has the sound English Dolby Digital 5.1 surround sound with, with the original Japanese language track. And it's in widescreen as we speak. The aspect ratio is 2.01. Enhanced for 16 by 9 television, and they even added a French language track to go with it. So, there you go. And it has this wonderful cover art. And, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a coupon for all the Studio Ghibli films that you can buy on DVD at the time. So you had to save $2. And it shows all the books and the soundtrack. And it comes with um, this um, scene selections that you have here. Here's disc one, which has um, Shihiro. <laughs> and this two, with Shihiro and No Face. <laughs> and this isn't the only release I got, too. In fact, um, just recently, I went to Best Buy. I actually got this at Fry's Electronics, which is no longer around anymore. I just got the Blu-ray release, and I got it for $14.99, a great deal, so that way I can upgrade it. And it only carries um, half of the features that's already on the DVD, they're just missing a few. Um, but the Napoleon Television Special is only on the DVD included. But yeah, it has this nice cover art right here, just identical to that one. They just forgot to put no face. And then, and then I put in the sticker that says celebrate the 20th anniversary with Studio Ghibli, which is just shows the logo of Spirited Away celebrating its 20th anniversary with Shakiro riding on 
Haku. Yeah. It will turn, of course, into a a flying dragon, just like uh, Balcor in the movie The Neverending Story. And yeah, the cover art right here has a critical quote saying, Nothing Less Than Magical by Joan Morgenstern of the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Same here with the cover art, Spine 2. And it just has uh, some more flyers here. Yeah, you get the Studio Ghibli um, steel books that they have available. Uh, you can get in the store, especially in retails. And you can also get, uh, but if you don't want to get the steel books, you can get the regular Blu rays uh, right here with all the selections of movies that they have available. And you can get it for a lot less. And it comes with a booklet that has all everything you need, uh, just artwork. Um, let's see. Got some uh, brief information here. Uh, yes, you can see uh, Shahiro with Haku, uh, the scene where he was about to feed her some um, rice, so that way she'll be able to have strength. Because she put a spell on it. Uh, some more artwork too. You know, with her, you know, working with the rest of the crew. And you can see No Face, who was about to you know, give um, Shahiro some tokens, or in some cases, even gold to help out this stink spirit. <laughs> um, so wonderful artwork here too. And this wonderful booklet. Yeah. And there's Yubaba. She does have a uh, identical twin sister too that lives uh, far away, and of course you see <laughs> once again her and and uh, Haku as a flying dragon. The statement for the director. I'm sorry, I keep moving around so much. Um, yeah, so on and so forth. That's just the booklet, and here's the. Uh, the artworks, uh, you got Shahiro just laying down, holding the flowers, which is roses, and your Baba again. And uh, does come with the artwork on the reversible format here. Yeah, this is just the, uh, the kitchen, where this is where you see all these spirits around. Yeah, all the ghosts. Yeah, just putting it back to the way it was. <laughs> just to make sure everything's safe. So here we go. <laughs> okay, so now let's begin. Uh, for the English dub version, it stars Davli Chase, Jason Marsden, Suzanne Plachette, David Oregon Styers, best known for playing Winchester, the TV show MASH. He's no longer with us. And neither is uh, Suzanne Butchett. Yeah, because they passed away. Suzanne Egan, Paul Elding, John Ratzenberger, Bob Bergen. Yes, the, the same voice actor who was best known for doing the voice of Porgy Pig and Tweety from Looney Tunes. Roger Bumpass. Um, of course, went on to do the voice of Squidward in SpongeBob SquarePants. Tara Strong, as you may know, she's done a lot of voice acting for several other animated shows, including Rugrats, The Powerpuff Girls, uh, My Little Pony, so on and so forth. Um, she's also known as uh, Tara Sherwin-Dolph. Michael Chicklets, Lauren Hawley, Jim Ward, and Jack Angel. In the Japanese version, it stars Wumi Haraji, along with Mayu Awino, Mari Natsuki, Banta Shigawawa, Yumi Tamai, Tonhun Hiko Kamijo, 
Tahiko Ano, Akito Nakamura, Tasunya Gashon, Yo Asumi, Mayosuki Kamika, Kamiki, sorry, Tahashi Nato, Yasuko Sawaguchi, Kabahachi, and Ken Yasada. And it's written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki, which in the English transition dub, as we all know, you got John Lasseter as the executive producer to hire Kurt Wise as the director, with Donald W. Ernest as producer, well, they also hired three writers for Sydney and Donald Hewitt to wrote the English language dialogue that's based on the Japanese dialogue, right there. The movie begins set somewhere in Japan. We meet a 10-year-old girl named Shahiro Ajino, joined by her parents, as they travel along into their new neighborhood, where they finally have a new house. They also have jobs and school. So that way they'll be able to meet some new partners, new workers, and even new friends hanging around. <laughs> so once they were driving inside the family car with four-wheel drive as it speeds up as fast as it could, <laughs> her father decided to take a shortcut directly into the forest where it had some small shrines and a statue, which they made a, a complete stop right what appears to be a tunnel and it goes directly into what it seems to be an abandoned amusement park with a train station around. So Shahiro's father insisted on exploring around and then they started sniffing some food that's coming from a local restaurant and that happens to be a buffet place where it has tons of steaming bowls of food like chicken a fish, a meat, you name it, all this delicious entrees that are hanging around with no one in sight. So her mother and father decided to dig in while Shahiro decided under against uh, her protests to explore around including this temple-like building known as the bathhouse. And that's when she spotted a young boy named Haku who warns her to return across the river bend before sunset because then something mysterious is about to happen. A lot of wicked spells are being casted by a sorceress named Yubaba who actually works inside the bathhouse. And soon we begin to spot several ghost spirits including No Face, uh, which in Japan is known as Kayonashi. So, it was too late when Shahiro found out that her parents had transformed into pigs. And now, she was ready to go straight into the river, which is now being flooded. And worse yet, her entire body is ready to fade away, you know, dissolving, becoming a spirit. So with the help of Haku giving her some rice cakes to revive herself and also try to escape from all these frogs and everyone around to actually go directly to ask for a job into the bathhouse by meeting a boiler man named Kamaji, who's a yokai commanding the, the Susa Watari, you know, one of those uh, spider-like sprites who goes around collecting all these uh, coals and just dumping them inside the boiler. He's like an eight-legged spider right there, and he wears shades, he does smoke. Meanwhile, you know, he's grabbing all the coals around and just spinning around the boiler so that way it can heat up the entire place. Kamaji refused to hire her and asked worker Lin to send Shahiro to Yubaba who of course does run the entire bathhouse. We also learned that she has an identical twin and it's known as 
and her name is Zimba, which she lives far away from where she is at. Yeah, she lives in this uh, cottage. Um, that's where she has, you know, all of her equipment that she has, where she starts knitting and, you know, creates all, all the quilts and all, you name it. I guess between the two, I mean, she's possibly the most nicer one of them all, while the other one is kind of tough, uh, bitter, sort of mean-spirited in a way, but in some cases, she kind of changed her ways. Anyway, she tries to frighten her, but she persisted by giving Shahiro a contract to work, and then Jababa takes her to the second kanaji of her name by giving an identity named Sin. So while visiting her parents' pig pen, Haku gives Sin a goodbye card that she had, had with her, and then at this point on, he will soon be able to give her some rice cakes so that way she'll be able to earn some strength. And apparently she did remember her name, Shahiro. And I know she started crying too because you know she really misses her parents so much. She's hoping that she'll be able to fight back against uh, Yubaba's evil spells. Not to mention that she's also crying because he's going to go away. We also learned that there's a secret behind Haku. Was that not only is he uh, like a wizard because he does perform a lot of powers that he got. We learned that he's actually a frying dragon. That's right. So at that point on, he's going to appear any time. Now, for the past couple days, um, Shahiro just continues to work uh, with Lin, and along with the rest of the guests and crew and all, as they finally got a customer to join by. And that's where we meet uh, No Face. And then, by bringing in all the tokens along and everything, he wanted to help out this stink spirit. Yes. This creature that's all muddy, coming from the river, that's all filled up completely. A after... Um, Shahiro and Lin decided to clean the entire bath because it was really dirty. Um, they had to use some herbal water that they had to pour in, and they already did. So now they have to use some more so that way they'll wash off all that mud. And not only that, but you also have a whole bunch of uh, trash and garbage uh, hanging around because you could tell that it's been flooded. And once uh, Shahiro decided to give this spirit a bath as hard as she could scrub and wash everything up now the entire spirit had finally went free and turns into back into a flying dragon amazing so of course as a thank you no face decided to grab some gold that he has to give to her but she decided she doesn't want any but everyone else who are working over there at the bathhouse did so yes since after that everyone wants to greet him and started to feed no face <laughs> completely and that's where no face goes completely wrong becomes like a, a frog like slug and creature because he just ate the, this one flog, you know, while Shahiro, Lin, and the rest of the crew were asleep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he just goes completely insane. And that's when they started feeding him completely until he started to become completely bloated and fat. And Shahiro just, well, Yababa just wanted to take her and and have Shahiro uh, take the sprouts that she has that, that No Face gave him uh, last time because he also gave the sprout before for the stink uh, spirits as he transforms yeah and that, that happened before 
So I probably will do the same, hoping that this will be the same um, sprout that she'll be able to use for parents to transform to themselves. But that's not going to happen. So he ends up um, doing it for no face, and that's where he started vomiting all that food and vomiting everyone, even those two frogs that he ate, where he was like saying, <laughs> underneath uh, the frog's voice uh, wipe, wipe that smiling you're still smiling <laughs> in the English dub version so yes started vomiting around <laughs> and it was and then started to chase uh, Shahiro around too even though she was about to save um, Haku that's already transformed into the flying dragon already being attacked by paper planes so yes now he had a tons of paper cuts he was bleeding to death and not only that but since she was already covered in blood and was trying to crawl all the way on top of the building straight into Yubaba's room that's where we spotted Yubaba's giant baby who just woke up wanted Shahiro to play so that's where but she, this baby is afraid of germs, so of course, Shahiro scared him off, <laughs> and now just continues to to run away. Um, your Baba, of course, already you know transformed into this uh, crow, you know, a flying bird at this point. Uh, she also has like a lot of um, unique spells too that she has. I mean, she even has those free-headed guys, you know, with with hair and mustaches around and and all these other kind of spells and then later it got transformed into a mice and all and and a uh, a guinea pig well that's when we finally meet the sister of her identical twin Sanaba and we found out that Haku just stole a local penance from her because he was going to give it to Yubaba at this rate. To make matters worse, Yobaba just orders to send uh, her parents to be slaughtered along with all the rest of the pigs too. So she was hoping that that's not going to happen. So anyway, after taking care of business with no face and also recovering uh, Haku's wounds and having to deal with the baby and everything going around, uh, Sin, Shahiro, <laughs> decided to uh, take the two train tickets from Kamaji that he's been saving for several years to go directly to Sanaba's house, the cottage that she lives, so that way they'll help them out. Well, Sin does, as Chihiro, meets uh, Sanaba, who makes a magic hair band and reveals Sin's love for Haku that broke her curse, and now he went back to normal. Because it led to this um, flashback, uh, which she remembers a long time ago, maybe when she was very young, that she didn't even know about. And at that point on, by the time the spell has been broken, which only one test left, was that she has to be able to figure out which of these pigs are her parents. And that's where she figured out that none of them are. So now it broke the curse. She now finally gets to go back to her parents and finally leave this place and decided to find their new journey home as we speak. Yeah. Such a brilliant, magical fantasy adventure that I really love. When I saw this movie on the big screen, in theaters uh, back in 2003, you know, just after they won the Oscar, I was so thrilled and amazed having to watch this movie. I mean, the animation is breathtaking, and even having to watch this on Blu ray for the first time on my 4K player, as well as my 4K TV, it just looks as stunningly beautiful as ever. And it's a significant upgrade to the DVD that I have, too. <laughs>
But I know, when, when I saw the movie in theaters, I was just so thrilled. It, it reminds me of how I went to see my neighbor Totoro in theaters uh, back when I was a little kid. It, it just, I just dreamed like I was already inside a fantasy world that I never expected to see. It's, it's like The Wizard of Oz blending in with the never-ending story and also Alice in Wonderland in a way because you got a heroine as an ordinary girl which the audience can sympathize with and she can and it can actually draw into the journey that they're set to something that they never have seen before I mean you spot a lot of people a lot of creatures around that you never know of and this is where everything goes the set design that they use for all the temples and all the other places around are based upon what you saw in Japan and it's all fully detailed the way it was done it's very magical how how the, the effects had occurred I mean it blends in with CGI effects too even though this is a hand-drawn animated feature it, it really um, inspired the the real life Edo Tokyo Open Air Architectural Museum that's in the Kanagi Tokyo Japan so this was like during the the period that was set to he even spotted Mount Fuji and all these other places too I mean it's just incredible and those spirits that you saw that's going around I mean wow I mean you got this uh, no face that looks like he had a kabaki, kabuki face uh, uh, the kabuki mask that he was wearing almost looked like a slug in a way and all that floating around um, all these other creatures that you spot I mean yes there's a lot of dark scary moments in there and then there are a lot of gross out scenes you know how <laughs> that's where you saw uh, you know, Shahiro's uh, reaction underneath her identity name Zen. <laughs> yeah. Or, and the fact that all the, the spells that we got where they transform everyone into pigs or any other mystical creatures around and they're hoping that, you know, they don't eat them or get slaughtered, that's for sure. There's a lot of supernaturalism, fantasy, traditional Japanese culture, Western consumerism and, and environmentalism that's all thrown into the story. Yeah. The characters are just incredible, of course. Um, Shihiro, known as Sin, is, you know, we, we see a girl that's just, you know, she has the vulnerability to do what she can. I mean, I know she's clumsy at times, but once she tries this hard, She'd be able to get better and better as it follows, you know, trying to go and stand up against this evil sorceress and maybe try to go into her identical twin to see how she will help. And I, I know this entire sorceress, you know, she has, she looks like she has like a muffin top uh, hairpiece. Um, she even has. Uh, <laughs> this mole on her forehead and she looks so graggly and the way she speaks I mean definitely witch like right there <laughs> and um, it's also incredible uh, the voice acting is amazing too they all lend their voices exactly right both English and Japanese um, I love the flying dragon, which definitely reminds me of Balkor in the Neverending Story. And even though um, Haku is a bit soft spoken, well, at least in the English dub version, I mean, this is the kind of character that you care for. I mean, you know, he's a hero too, helps her out, teaches her to do what she can while he's a while he's away and then um, she began to help on her own too I mean she gets to do anything on her own without anything going wrong and now she gets to save him 
That's perfect. And also get to save her parents, too. I mean, she's a, she's a pretty bright girl. And shows. And you gotta love the scene with the train, too, where you spotted all these uh, ghost spirits. You know, just uh, riding around. And you even spotted a conductor, too. And it just goes by that just moves directly through the river band and yeah which has already been flooded as we speak so it just continues uh, to move around it's going straight it's incredible so anyway I'm, I'm also happy that not only that it won the Academy Award for best animated feature but there's like tons of rewards that joins in and I'm glad the film got the attention it deserves. It became so popular. You know, it, it simply became one of the best movies of the 21st century, regarded by many critics around, including Roger Ebert, who, of course, had recommended the film when he saw it in theaters, um, the same way that he recommended My Neighbor Totoro and Princess Mononoke. I mean, it's just a spellbinding masterpiece from beginning, middle, and the end. There's there's tons of funny moments here and there that you'll stick by you. And everyone involved, too. I mean, I, I even like the other characters that they got, too. Like Lynn, who's like a, a punky uh, type of girl who does anything to help uh, Sin out you know to fix everything and then you get all these other characters uh, like um, Chichi Yagi Yaku or Anyaku assistant manager and then you get this giant baby named Bo <laughs> and all these other uh, spirits like you have the river and radish spirits especially when they're trying to go up to the elevator <laughs> So you spotted those people, anybody around, and of course they always, you know, they always lead to discriminations and all these other acts, like or the way things are going. I mean, or any crimination or all of that that's going around. That's what we, that's where everything in the movie is just so important to the story, to its animation. So it's breathtaking, the uh, fantasies around everything. It's just amazing. And I love this movie so much. I would watch it again and again and again, along with my neighbor Totoro and other Studio Ghibli films. That's for sure. Oh, and I also forgot that the music was incredibly soothing, inspiring. Definitely a dreamlike sequence is everywhere around, and it's just beautiful. It was done by Joe Ashashi, who had been working with the score on every Studio Ghibli film out there. It's perfect. Yeah. So, you'll never get tired of this film. It's, again... A spiritual masterpiece. And it's not just for kids, it's also for teenagers, adults, and seniors, too. It's for everyone to enjoy and have fun. So that's Spirited Away, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.